Could you okay, provide so for we, us a definition of anti-Semitism? Attention, everyone. Today, I want to delve into a truly intriguing topic, one that deserves ample discussion but without delving into theological debates that might divert our focus. We're here to talk about the notion that the phrase, Christ is King, holds anti-Semitic undertones, an assertion put forward by voices at the Daily Wire and members of the Jewish community. Let's pause and consider this conceptually. From a theological standpoint, it's understandable why some within the Jewish faith might perceive such phrasing as problematic. There's a historical backdrop rooted in the New Testament, where passages like John 8 verse 44 depict Jesus addressing Jews who rejected him, which has been interpreted by some as contributing to anti-Semitic sentiments. This interpretation gains traction when considering scholars like Rabbi Michael J. Cook, who highlights sections of the New Testament that are viewed as fostering anti-Judaism and anti-Semitism. For instance, there's the notion of blaming Jews for the crucifixion of Jesus or suggesting collective guilt. Moreover, the replacement doctrine, asserting Christians as the new chosen people, has been identified as another potential source of tension between the two faiths. The crux of the matter lies in recognizing the theological disparities between Judaism and Christianity. These differences often serve as the backdrop for accusations of anti-Semitism stemming from phrases like, Christ is King. Could you okay, provide so for us a definition of anti-Semitism? I, absolutely. I really appreciate that because I think that is the break. If we're not speaking the same language, where can we go, mm -hmm. right? So there's a man, um, a blessed memory man named Lord Jonathan uh, Sachs, he was the chief rabbi of England, he had a great line. He really defined anti-Semitism, um, that, that anti-Semitism is Jews have no right to exist collectively as Jews with the same rights as other human beings. Which is kind of a weird statement, so let's just track back a bit to understand the history of anti-Semitism. 2,000 years ago, Jews don't accept Jesus as Messiah. For people who do not have faith, as the early Christians, as some of them have faith, some of them accept Jesus, but they don't really in their heart. And you and I know both know people like Rob McCoy, who accepts it fully in their heart, and other people who are doing it without faith. And they're, they, they're, those who have less faith, the fact that a Jew exists, let alone thrives, mm. is a threat to their faith. Because how can the Jew not accept Jesus as God and still thrive? Unless he's associated with the devil. So you start having these, these myths that are created of the Jew being identified with the opposite of God. By acknowledging these complexities, we can foster a more nuanced understanding and strive for respectful dialogue across religious divides. It's imperative to recognize the sensitivities involved and engage in conversations that promote mutual understanding rather than inadvertently perpetuating divisive narratives. In conclusion, let's approach this topic with empathy and a willingness to listen, recognizing the diverse perspectives at play. Only through respectful discourse can we move towards greater unity and mutual respect among all faith traditions.